Well, what is up all you friends of Aslan? My name is Stuart and I'm the host of Into the Wardrobe and your personal guide to the world of Narnia. Today's an exciting day for many reasons and they're all about you. First of all, it's a day of celebration. This channel has now reached over 10,000 subscribers and it's not slowing down. That's something you, the friends of Aslan, should be excited about because this channel is not just a place to binge watch Narnian lore, it's a place for community. And all of you have joined this channel because the world of Narnia means something important to you. And you wanna share that world with others. So if you're not already a part of this community, I wanna invite you to join us. The best way you can do that is to subscribe and comment in our videos. There's something really special about the people of this channel and we'd love for you to be a part of it all here. Today's also special because it's the first day that we're introducing a brand new segment we're calling The Deep Realm. Now this is a place where we take a short break from all the lore and the theory and the literary analysis and we talk about pretty much everything else from answering your questions to talking about recent Narnia news and even interviewing some great people in the Narnia realm. Now today we're going to be talking about something really exciting, Netflix Narnia. Now for all the true fans of Narnia, a storm has been brewing for many years. We first saw it in the clouds on the horizon of October 2018, when Netflix announced that they had acquired the rights to the complete Narnian series. It was the first time in history that any company had owned all the rights at one time. And at the same time, a new way of telling stories had emerged in the format of online streaming series. A series like The Mandalorian, WandaVision, The Handmaid's Tale, and The Mysterious Benedict Society have showed us how detailed, long form, and epic narratives could flourish in a format that wasn't as constrained by the typical pacing and structure requirements of a standard three-act movie script. And with the convergence of these high and low pressure fronts, to continue the bad metaphor, it seems that Narnian stories like The Magician's Nephew, The Silver Chair, and The Last Battle to name a few, stories which didn't easily conform to a typical film adaptation, these stories could finally be given the freedom to develop and unfold in a way that would actually do them justice. The question is, and I promise you this is the last weather-related metaphor I'll use, will these clouds bring a terrible storm of destruction to the calm and settled Narnian world? Or will they bring refreshment and revival to a seemingly dry and arid landscape? So today, we're gonna dive in and talk about exactly how the developers of Netflix Narnia can take advantage of this possibly once and for all opportunity to do justice to the amazing stories of Aslan's world and share these stories for the first time with untold millions around the world. Now, before we get started, I wanna take a moment and thank the team at Narnia Web for helping inspire and inform this episode and many other episodes on this channel. Between the exclusive news updates, insider information, incredible community forum, and constantly insightful podcasts, it really is the best place on the web for true fans of Narnia to stay informed on the latest Narnia news and go further up and further in into the world of Narnia. Be sure to check out the link in the video description below to see Narnia Web for yourself. Well, without further ado, let's get started. It's time to leave the Shadowlands behind and step into a world that's more real than our own. It's time to follow me into the wardrobe. What is it about a film adaptation that makes Narnia fans so excited? On the surface, there's the spectacle of it, the opportunity to see with your physical eyes what had previously only been visible in the mind's eye. And at perhaps an even deeper level, there's an unspoken desire for something fresh, something new, something to help us rediscover this world with eyes anew, to return to the days when we were first captured and enthralled with these amazing stories. I believe that a long form series presents the perfect opportunity to accomplish all of this and more. I believe that within each book, there are opportunities to delve into backstories, to develop characters and build out worlds that will ultimately make the stories even better now today I'm going to lay out some specific places where new stories can be told, all within the overarching stories of each book. Now make no mistake, it'd be a terrible idea to just fling the gates open and let a major Hollywood studio run wild with Lewis's masterpiece. So to that end, here are a few ground rules about what these stories should, should not, and must not do. Rule number one, must not contradict canon, timeline, details, character personalities, or anything else. When Lewis had spoken about a particular detail, chronology, or plot point, 
we should consider it set in stone. Any new writing must not contradict Narnian canon. This could also include events and details in C.S. Lewis's Narnian timeline that might not have appeared specifically in the books. Ultimately, there's freedom in these empty spaces, and we should look there for opportunities to expand on the richness of this wonderful world. Rule number two, they must complement or supplement, but not replace or overshadow the original stories. The results of any extra canon content should be that the original stories are better served. Rule number three, they must maintain C.S. Lewis's intended virtues, values, and principles, the same ones in the original books. Above all else, the stories of Narnia are built on C.S. Lewis's philosophical and theological framework of universal truth, ultimate good, and undeniable virtue, all of which was based on his strong belief in traditional Christian theology. Simply put, any content that violates these principles would be fundamentally opposed to the world that Lewis set about to create in the first place. Rule number four, you must tell great stories. It should go without saying, but any additional content has to do justice to the world in which it's set. Lewis has set a nearly impossibly high bar here. So any new additions to the stories have to be just as great. Otherwise, it's better to leave them out altogether. So with these disclaimers in mind, I now present to you four ways that the Chronicles of Narnia could be expanded. Number one, the magician's nephew, Uncle Andrew the Antihero featuring Godmother Le Fay. You know, one of the most intriguing moments in The Magician's Nephew is when Uncle Andrew explains how he developed the magic rings, and more specifically, how he came across the magic dust that was used to create the rings in the first place. Andrew mentions, however briefly, that his godmother, Le Fay, had claimed to be part fairy, and the dust had been handed down for generations. It would be incredible to see the storytellers take us back to young Andrew Ketterly's adolescence as he learned the ways of magic from his godmother. Suppose he began as a kind-hearted young man, but through some trauma or tragedy, he became selfish, wicked. The pitiful man we see in The Magician's Nephew. We would discover more about his relationship with his sister, Diggory's mother, and why years later she lay on her deathbed. He was nothing short of indifferent during those times. Why? Perhaps the backstory will help us understand and even empathize with this tragic figure offering us insight into why he was so desperate to use his magic to escape our world. All of these details would ultimately serve to raise the stakes in the main story and grab onto one overarching plot point, Diggory's desperate and driving quest to save the life of his mother. Number two, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, 900 Years of Jadis. Let's face it, creating yet another adaptation of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is going to be a challenge. For many, the 2005 Walden Media and Disney Pictures movie will always be the true version of this story. Simply put, this book needs a strong reset. What better way to do so than by easing the viewers into this alternate world? Say, by beginning over 100 years before the book begins. We know that according to Lewis's timeline, Jadis returned to Narnia after nine centuries of exile. Now, just two short years later, Jadis would cast the spell of the long winter over Narnia. How amazing would it be to follow the life of Jadis over those 1,000 years? If viewers were able to catch a glimpse of Jadis, suffering in exile, developing her craft, and growing in her hatred of Aslan for over 900 years, we'd understand the depths to which she would go to destroy Aslan and his kingdom. If we were able to witness those moments of cunning and strength as Jadis the military leader conquers Narnia, and the fierce brutality of her reign during those 100 years in the long winter, we'd have a greater appreciation and fear of her ruthlessness and her murderous rage. And if we were to learn of her discovery of the laws of the deep magic and the golden age prophecy, we would even better anticipate her cunning plans to undermine the prophecy while also destroying Aslan. Again, this is a backstory that could absolutely serve to increase the emotional investment on this new telling of a very familiar story. Number three, The Silver Chair, Rillian's Quest. While The Silver Chair might just be my favorite book in all the Chronicles of Narnia, and when it comes to stories that you wish could be told, I know that for many Narnian fans, there's often a deep regret that C.S. Lewis didn't tell us more about the mysterious Lady of the Green Kirtle. However, believe it or not, I don't think this is a story Netflix Narnia should try to tell. As I mentioned in my previous videos about the Lady of the Green Kirtle, 
It's the mystery that makes her such a compelling character. To try to tell more about her would ultimately spoil the thing that makes her so interesting in the first place. Sometimes the best stories are the ones left untold. However, there's one story that could and should be developed, and it's the one that has always bothered me about the silver chair. You see, there seems to be a lack of emotional connection for Prince Rillian, not only among the readers, but among the characters as well. For example, Eustace and Jill aren't motivated by their concern for the lost prince they've never met, but are instead motivated to obey the commands of Aslan. Even Rillian's own father had given up the hope long ago and was no longer driven to find him. The writers of this series need to help the audience become invested in Rillian before he ever goes missing. So let them dedicate an entire episode to the story of Rillian's grief, his quest, and his disappearance. Begin with scenes that emphasize his deep and abiding devotion for the beloved queen. Show the deep despair and anger that comes as a result of her death. Follow Rillian as he searches day after day for vengeance against the venomous worm that killed his mother. Push in on his eyes as he sees the beautiful and mysterious green lady for the first time. And finally, let the viewer feel fear and sorrow when one fateful night he doesn't return home. By doing this, viewers will never forget the real reason for Jill and Eustace's journey. The viewers will feel the frustration as Jill and Eustace forget their commands, the sense of urgency as they veer off course, and ultimately, the joy when they finally find and rescue the long lost prince. And finally, number four, and my personal favorite, a Charn spinoff. Now, as long as we're dreaming, I have to throw this one in here and we need no, we demand a spin-off series that's set in the world of Charn. The whole setting is nearly Shakespearean. It's the crown meets the Mandalorian. Entire seasons could be written about the rise and the fall of Charn and their royal family, culminating with the final season that features the epic battle between Jadis and her sister, the utterance of the deplorable word, and the final tragic attempt by Jadis to place herself in suspended animation for all eternity. I'm telling you, that's a series the entire world would watch. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Of course, these are wild ideas, but hey, what's the use of dreaming if you can't dream big? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas for Netflix Narnia, so please leave them in the comments below. And be sure to join us next time as we take another journey into the wardrobe.